Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. We now move into question 6 of the 2021 CXE Mathematics Pass Paper 2. And without further ado, we get right into it. And we we'll start with question 6. It says, Farmer Brown makes straw to feed his farm animals using wood that is 5 cm thick. As shown in the diagram below, the trough has a rectangular base open at the top and has external dimensions of 300 cm by 190 cm by 160 cm. Alright, so here it goes. Show by calculation that the internal capacity of the trough is 8,091,000 cubic centimeters. Now, how do I in approach a question like this? Alright, let's get right into it. So I'm going to move down a bit right here. Now, we know that this is a cuboid. So the capacity, which actually is the internal volume, can be, well, volume equal. And please remember that capacity means how much it can hold, right? Is length times width times height for a cuboid. Or we can say area of cross-section. Cross-section is a rectangle, length times width, multiplied by the height. And, and that is it. But here's our problem now. We are looking at how much water or whatever can hold inside of it. So we're not going to consider the external part. So what it means is that this area of thickness right here, so nothing can hold here. So we have to consider the 5 cm thickness that we have. Which means that for me to calculate the volume, I'm going to have to subtract 5 cm so I can get the internal dimension. Because the internal dimension is what will give me the capacity of this container here. So technically, since it's 5 cm thick, what it means is that this 190 that I have here, I'm going to have to take out 5 cm up there for the thickness, 5 cm down here for the thickness, which makes this 180 cm. Likewise, with the 300, it's 5 cm thick, so I'm going to have to consider the thickness at either ends right here, if I were to carry this down, so you could actually carry it down so you can see it. Carried on the 5 cm thickness. Alright, hold on, here we go. So consider that all the concrete to be 5 cm thick. So it means on both sides I'm going to have to subtract 5, which means this is going to give me 290 cm. But what about the height? Of course the top is open, so the top is not going to have a thickness. It's just a bottom down here that will have the thickness. So for this 160, I'm going to have to take away 5 for the bottom thickness here. Which is going to give me 155. So we have to realize what happens whenever you have a container that has thickness. And this is real life. Because if you have a tank, it's going to have some form of thickness. So my length now, if I'm using 190 as my length, it would be 180 there for the internal capacity. So it would be 180 multiplied by 290 multiplied by 155. And if it is correct, we'll know when we bring the calculator in here. So I'm going to have 180 times 290 times 155 equal, and that's it, 8 million and 91,000. So that's 80. All right. And of course, this is cubic centimeters. So that's how we get the volume there, or the capacity. I don't want to say volume in this case because we're looking at how much it can hold, which is in case in this case the capacity. We had to subtract five from each edge because the thickness of the material used to create this tank. All right, so that was the importance of subtracting the five from either side. Now, if we take this down some more, it says calculate the volume of wood needed to make a trough. Now, of course, they're talking about the volume of the material. So, since we have the internal capacity. And we know what the external dimensions are. If we can find the external dimension and subtract the internal capacity, then of course that would leave you with the volume of wood which is in between the outside and the inside of this container here. So we'd find a volume, which is a space occupied by the entire thing. We'd find a capacity. And whenever we take away the capacity, whatever would be left would be the volume of the wood or the material itself. So let me go down here. So we can actually create a little formula here that says volume of wood. Would be equal to the volume of container. 
and this is the total volume now subtract capacity of container capacity is how much it can hold all right now the volume we're looking at it as the entire thing that is taken up by the thing all right of course it's still going to be length times with times height but this is minus eight million ninety one thousand good so length times with times height so if we go back to the object so you can see the dimensions you're going to realize that we're going to have 300 190 and 160 because we're using the entire thing so it's going to be 300 times i'm gonna go back up to ensure that we are seeing the dimensions here and we understand what we are doing so that's 300 190 and 160 300 times 190 times 160 all right once again this is a calculator work all right so it's going to be 300 times 190 times 160 equal and of course i can put all this inside of my calculator one time i'm going to subtract 8 million and 91 thousand that's 102 thousand no, that's one million and twenty nine thousand. All right, so we'll have one million and twenty nine thousand there. And this, of course, is cubic centimeter. This is the amount of material that would be required to make the trough itself or the container, whatever it is. All right, so let's take this down some more. It says Farmer Brown must paint the internal surface of the trough given that one gallon of paint covers 280,000 square centimeters of surface determine the total amount of paint in liters that is required to paint the internal surface of a trough. Alright, so we have some work to do here. Now, what we want to find is the internal area of this particular trough and it's important to notice that one gallon of paint covers this amount. And we want to find the total amount of paint in liters that is required. So we're going to have to do some conversion. But let us focus on how we find the internal area of the trough. Now let's go back. Now, if we look at the trough inside, we realize that all we have are rectangles right around. Good? Now, if we're talking about the internal aspect of the trough, bear in mind that we're going to be talking about the internal dimensions of the trough. So for example, the face, is, the face up here, let's label them. This face up here, and this face down here would be the same the face over there and the face over here would be the same and of course you have the, the bottom so we're going to find the area of all of these triangles let's start with the bottom and since we're using the internal dimension we know it's going to be 180 by 290 for the inside to get that flooring right there because we're taking out the thickness so let's go it step by step we're going to go down and we're going to talk about area of inside so the area our total area equal of course once again let me go back up so you can see the dimensions that we're working with the floor we're starting with the bottom which would be 290 by 180 inside so it would be 290 times 180 290 times 180 <clears throat> all right let's look at the rectangle at the top and the bottom now all right so we'll go back up up here, this rectangle here would be 155, and long way going across, it would be 290, right? So 155 by 290, because down here and up here would actually be the same thing. So 290 by 155. All right, so let's go back down now. Two ninety times 155 but of course you have two faces that look exactly the same so we multiply this by two let's look at the rectangle to the left and the one to the right so let's go back up again so make sure you understand we're looking at this rectangle over here and this rectangle over here all right of course it has the same width if you want to call this the width which is 155 but down here would be 180 and of course it's two of them so it's 155 by 180 by two so we go back down here and we go 2 
times 155 times 180. Now, of course, I can put all this inside of a calculator. All right, so on. So it's, let me clear this, 290 multiplied by 180 plus 2 times 290 times 155 plus 2 times 155 times 180. That's 197,900, right? So 197,900, and this is squared centimeter. Now let us ensure that we put in the values here correctly. So we have 290 times 180 plus 2 times 290 times 155 plus 2 times 155 times 180. All right, so we're good to go here. Now, of course, this is in cubic centimeter. Now, let, let us see what it says. It says that one gallon of paint can cover a surface of 280,000 square centimeter. So this is what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to divide this now by 280,000 square centimeter to know how many gallons I'm going to have to use. So I'm going to have number of gallons equal to 197,900 divided by 280,000. All right, so go back for the calculator. Divided by 280,000. That's 0 0.707. So it's 0 0.707 gallons. No, we don't want it in gallons. We want it in liters. All right. So it says one gallon is equal to 3.79 liters. So we're going to have to multiply there. So it's 0 0.707 multiplied by 3.79. That let's see what happens here. Zero point seven zero seven multiplied by three point seven nine, and that's two point six or two point seven. So this would be two point seven liters. Now let's read the question carefully to see if they wanted us to round off anything. Determine the total amount of paint. In liters that is needed to paint it during our service of the paint of the trough will need 2.7 liters of paint and that brings us to the end of this question which is question 6 all right